And we finally arrived to my number one all time favorite game. And this is going to be a very cute but savage game called Root. 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 You know what my favorite song from Cars is? Route 66. You know, Jess, I don't know what I'm gonna do for my next video. I'm kinda stuck in a root. <laughs> Hey Jess. Yeah. Ooh. I think I'm gonna do a, a review next for my video. It might be a step in the root direction. <laughs> Alright, time to start the video. Wish me luck, honey. I'm rooting for ya. Thanks. Good morning everybody, welcome back to Twister Shul for another edition of the Digital Board Gamer where I look at a tabletop board game on digital platforms. I'm extremely excited for today's episode because I'm going to be covering my favorite game of all time, Root. When I was coming out of college and just getting into the hobby, Root was one of the first games that just burst out of my computer screen and really grabbed my attention with its style, the art, and its unique nature amongst other board games that I had known. And the more I dug into the rabbit hole, the more entranced I was by everything it had to offer. So when I heard that it was coming to digital platforms, it was a no-brainer to take the dive into putting it on my virtual game shelf. So without further ado, Let's engage in some woodland warfare when we cover Root. Designed by Cole Worley, originally published by Later Games with the app developed by Dire Wolf Digital. Root tells the story of a war that is going on throughout the woodland. And as one of the players, you're going to be taking control of one of the many factions that you can find in this game to help drive the narrative so that your faction has the most influence in this story. And that influence is going to be tracked by the amount of victory points you have, where the winner is going to be the first to get 30 victory points. Now, unlike many other games, Root has a very high level of asymmetry that you cannot find in many other games. Most games might have a symmetry where you have a, a simple player power that might help you in certain situations. But Root is different in that every faction is unique in its gameplay and the way that it interacts with the game itself. Now, I won't go through all of the factions that you can find in Root or even all of the rules that are in Root because we'll, we'll be here for hours if I do that. But rather, I want to give you a brief glimpse as to how the first four factions play out, as those are the four factions you will be getting when you purchase the initial game. The first faction you are going to encounter is the Marquise de Cat, a force that has just recently taken over the woodland and seeking to maintain control over it. And just like any other good invading force, what better way to maintain control than through industrialization, of course? Now the cats are going to be your usual real-time strategy base building games with the buildings that you place netting you the most amount of victory points needed to win. At the start of your turn, your sawmills are going to produce wood which allows you to create more buildings. You can choose to build more sawmills which allow you to again create more wood at the start of your turn. You can choose to build recruiters which are like barracks, granting you more warriors and building up your military. Or you can choose to build workshops, which allow you to gain special abilities and items through crafting. The more of one type of building you put out, the more points you will get. But by placing a variety of buildings, you might have a kingdom that is a little bit more stable and allows you to do more on your turn. So it's a, a bit of a dilemma as to what buildings to place at what time. On top of that, you also want to maintain a military presence to slow some of the other factions down as they invade you and kind of get up in your business. And, and you might also use that military presence to push back to gain some important clearings, just like a teenager might push back their parents from entering their room. Hey mom, what are you doing? Can't a guy play video games in peace? Get out of here. The cats are all about area control and trying to maintain clearing so that they can build and trying to take down any opponents who might threaten that. While the cats are busy getting their empire established, the birds of the Eerie dynasties, who were the former rulers of the woodland, have been pushed back into the final clearing. However, they have regrouped, elected a leader to bring them to battle, 
and are ready to reclaim what is rightfully theirs. Now the Eerie are going to be playing a little bit more of a programming game where they are going to be slotting cards every turn uh, into what's known as their decree. And they must follow this decree to AT in order from left to right starting from recruit to move to battle and to build. And again following the suits on the cards that are there and again that is another conversation for another time. Now, while you may start slow with only a couple of moves where you're like recruiting once in a bunny clearing, then moving from any clearing and building in any clearing, by turn five, you might have this explosive decree where you're recruiting three times and then moving four, battling twice and then building twice. The more you follow your decree and the more cards that are put in, the more powerful your faction becomes. But if there is ever a point where you cannot follow an action that is on your decree, the people get angry, your government collapses, and you fall into what is known as turmoil, where your leader is deposed, and you must elect a new one and start all over with the Kree. All of your actions are wiped off, and you must start once again from the beginning. Now, every time you go into turmoil, to add on to all of this, you're also going to lose points as well. So. The Irie are all about programming and, and making sure you're planning your moves ahead so you can build a stable empire once again, not allowing other factions to, to get in so that you can avoid turmoil, much like the plague. Speaking of the plague, we now take a look at the Woodland Alliance, a group of ragtag rebels comprised of the citizens in these clearings which the war takes place in, who are watching this war and seeing what it's doing to its people and looking to fight back to end it once and for all. Now, the Woodland Alliance does not actually start on the board at the beginning of the turn, but rather they're going to be taking their turn spreading sympathy to draw more supporters in to their cause until an eventual outrage will occur where they will wipe out the warriors and the buildings in that clearing and establish a base of their own. And once that base is established, they're going to further operate in the night, taking their warriors and, and bringing them into other clearings for a late night raid or to spread sympathy even further. But be careful because if a base manages to become destroyed, your supporters of that clearing will vanish much like cotton candy does in water due to the fear that is instilled in them as to what may happen if they continue to support your cause. Now I mentioned a plague earlier because this very much feels like the app Plague Inc where you're going around spreading diseases but unlike diseases you are going to be spreading these sympathy tokens which are your main way of scoring victory points and are going to be key in bringing more supporters into the cause as they shout for the alliance like a classic loyal Warcraft player. And finally, we come to the Vagabond, which is not an army, but rather one single pawn that can never be removed from the board. Now, the, the Vagabond's going to be playing almost like a pseudo RPG style game where he will explore ruins, go on quests, and play all sides of the conflict, either aiding certain factions or going to battle with them. And all of these different avenues will score the Vagabond victory points. And throughout his journey, the Vagabond will be acquiring items, some which will give him more actions, some which increase his bag size or allow him to draw more cards, and all of which act as a health point system. In battle, the Vagabond does not take away his pawn, but rather will damage his items, meaning he has less things to do on his turn. And if he gets beat up too much to the point where he may not have anything to do, he might go slumping into the forest to repair everything so that he can continue his journey on the turn after. Now, at the beginning of the game, the Vagabond with his limited items might seem as uh, ferocious as a chihuahua in the park, but let him get too many items or have too much of a grasp on the game, he can be as ferocious as the Tasmanian Devil from Looney Tunes. The element that allows Root to stand out amongst the crowd, much like a cosplayer at a dinner party, is the fact that it provides different gameplay styles through its asymmetric factions. And this is going to produce some very interesting interactions that you can't find in many other board games. And not only that, but it provides a, a level of accessibility in that you can have different people who prefer different gameplay styles and you can still enjoy this game together. 
Do you love programming your moves ahead? Well, you can grab hold of the birds. Or maybe if you love starting an underground movement that, that involves riding and revolting, then you can take hold of the Woodland Alliance. There is going to be something that just clicks with you and that will be different for each person. Not only that, but Direwolf Digital has also gone on to say that there are expansions coming too, including new boards, the, the new deck of cards, and more expansions. So if you want to enjoy being merchant beavers, or cultist lizards, or an underground army of moles, or even a spy network of crows, you can look forward to being those things in the future. And on top of all of this, I have not even explained many of the other systems that are just in, in the base game of Root with its simple battling system, the cards and the crafted abilities. There is just so much that is going on in this one to two hour game. The other element that makes Root so special is the art. And while I miss the, the fun, cute little looking meeples and the tactile feeling of the physical board game, the app does a great job at taking Kyle Ferrand's original art that was lovingly created and translating that into these 3D figures and putting them in a world that is just so wonderfully created. Even the subtle visual cues that go into this app helps with the game design to either assist you into what you can and cannot do, such as highlighting cards that you can use for crafting, or to even put you into the setting further, such as the rising and the falling of the sun through the different phases of your turn. It really does help set you in the mood as the Woodland Alliance to see that you're moving around and operating in the middle of the night, making a sneak attack against another faction. It just blows me away the amount of care and attention that Dire Wolf Digital has put into everything in this app. It makes this forest feel alive and even the smallest interactive elements help to transport you into this wonderful woodland world. I mean, even by tapping certain objects, you can cause workplace hazards or, or earthquakes that shake the eerie nests or even bug the, the alliance supporters that are helping to, to rally other people to their cause. Again, details like these don't need to be in there, but they provide a laugh, a sense of charm, and it really adds to that flavor that Root brings. However, all of this is going to come at a cost. And I'm not just talking about the $13 that you need to pay for the app, although that still may be a major factor for some. Rather, I'm talking about the learning process. While Root does a decent job at easing you in with its cute aesthetics, there are a lot of rules and exceptions to the rules to learn because of its many different factions. I remember trying to teach this game to my brothers and taking half an hour just to go through rule and moving and battling and how crafting works and how each of the factions operated. And even once we got to the game, they were still extremely confused as to what they all could and couldn't do. Root has a steep learning curve, and even once you've learned a faction and mastered its strategies, once you go on to another faction, you're gonna have to start some of that learning process all over. You may have a basic knowledge, but having that head knowledge and really knowing what you can do with a faction is totally different things and it will take time to fully be able to lean into its strengths. I find that the small rules themselves aren't hard to understand but the fact that there are so many of rules or exceptions to the rules it makes it hard for you to understand exactly what all you can do or why you cannot do certain things. Now, thankfully, there is a wonderfully crafted tutorial present in this app that does a much better job than I could ever do at teaching this game. To the point where if someone were to come up to me and ask me to teach the, the game to them, I would just simply hand them this app and, and tell them to play through the tutorial campaign. It's that good. However, still getting all the rules down and put to memory so that you can just be able to play a solidly good game of Root will still take a good amount of time. Not only does the tutorial help guide you to understanding the basic rules, but the challenges that are found in this game will help you understand different strategies that are involved with each faction or they just add wacky twists that makes this game replayable as a solo experience. 
you can play the, the different challenges and the solo play uh, to kind of get a better grasp of how this game works before diving into playing with other people. However, if you want this game purely for the solo experience, I have to warn you, the AI that comes with the base game is all right at best. I mean, I've played them even in hard mode and they've made many questionable decisions where it does absolutely nothing to help them or even makes the situation for them worse. Now there is a way to remedy that through what's called the Clockwork Expansion, which adds bots that were originally in the physical game, but what it does is it helps to provide a more robust solo experience or as a cooperative element, or if you just need to fill in an extra role, you can just put in a bot with different traits in there. However, it comes at a cost of 750 and if solo play or cooperative play or whatever it offers isn't something that you're willing to put that money into, I'd say just skip it. You don't really need it for the full experience unless you want that type of experience in your gameplay. Now the other thing is, once you've learned the basic rules and you have that basic understanding of how all of it works, there's still a lot of depth in there where you have to learn each faction's strengths and weaknesses and the nuances between all the interactions between each of the factions and the game. There is a lot to dive into. Now, on the one side of the coin, this leads to a lot of exploration and replayability, but on the flip side, you are going to have some frustrating encounters while you are going throughout learning all of this. I mean, for example, let's say you played your first game, you're going to notice that maybe one faction does extremely well. And so the next game, you're going to try and do your best to, to police that faction, make sure they don't get too far ahead. But in the process of doing so, you're letting a different faction just easily slide to victory. Or you might be put in a position where the rest of the table is all ganging up on you and you're, you're left sitting there. You have no chance of winning, but there's still 45 minutes left in the game. Or you might be put in a king-making position where your choice is that your final turn is going to dictate which person will win or lose. And, and that's not a bad thing necessarily, except in a game that is, allows you to invest in the experience so much like this one, when you've worked so hard to put yourself in a, a victory condition, to have that pulled from you by another person based off of their actions can sometimes feel frustrating and awkward depending on who you play with. And heaven help you if you don't know what you're doing and you're playing with a seasoned veteran who's not willing to help you learn and explore this game because they're going to, to be able to build up their faction's engine so quick that you will not know how to counter it. You see, in order to understand the balance of Root, you have to understand all of the factions and the nuances and the interactions between each other. You're going to realize that certain factions counter others well and certain factions don't counter well to, to other people's abilities and strengths. And in all of that, you're also going to realize that some of your table talk is going to end up being political as you try and convince the other players around you that you really aren't in as good of a spot as the board might say you are. You, you might be leading in victory points, but you have to be careful of the Woodland Alliance or, or some other faction that could pass you in victory points. And it's, it's going to be up to you to convince the table that if they don't go after someone else, they're going to lose the game. And so that, that can be a turnoff for some, and yet for others, it can be something wonderful. It all depends on whether you like that high, that high level of uh, uh, human interaction in your game. I like to compare Root with something very similar to an orchestra, where each role plays a, a key instrument, each with its own unique sound and flavor, and when put together, can create something wonderful and unique and magical. And like learning an instrument, Root is going to require you to, to spend a lot of time and dedication and with that it will create a couple of frustrating experiences as you get to work together and understand how this game operates. 
you have to make sure you're doing your theory assignments and understanding how your instrument plays not only in and of itself but within the bigger picture of the orchestra and when you're with other people you have to make sure that no instrument is getting too loud or hogging the spotlight for too long you want to make sure that the trumpets aren't overbearing the violins that the percussion isn't getting too loud and you want to make space for the flute to to be able to be heard and to add that extra flavor in in your venture to fully understand and discover the sound that this game creates you will have a couple of experiences that is the orchestral equivalent of a elementary school band. And that's not a bad thing in and of itself, but if you just want a game that you can pull off the shelf, that you can learn very quickly and, and just get into and have fun right away, this game may not be for you. Now granted, the time it takes to learn this game is a lot quicker than, than learning the piano or the violin, maybe not the shaker, but that's besides the point. If you give it its time of day, you're going to find a game that is dynamic, a little bit weird, and a whole lot of fun. And to help you through that learning process, to kind of ease you into the game, the, the art and the way that it presents itself is, is just so gorgeous that it may encourage you to get over those frustrations that, that kind of get in your way. Sure, the Woodland Alliance just revolted in a key clearing that you needed, but look at the little guy. Can you really blame him? He's just so cute. In the end, if you are willing to put in some time and effort to understand and enjoy this game, you might find one of the most famous, compelling, and unique asymmetrical experiences with great art, and, and, and especially if you don't mind that combative, uh, something with heavy player interaction, this is going to be the game for you and well worth the $13 that it takes to, to buy the app. However, if you're just someone who wants to have a good time with your friends, if, if you don't really uh, want to learn the ins and outs of the entire experiences, but you just want uh, some sort of experience that can almost guarantee that everyone at the table is going to have a good time and feel like they have accomplished something during that you know 30 minutes, hour, two hours that they're playing, then this may not be for you. It might just come down to a preference thing. Finally, the question has to be asked, is this worth getting over the physical board game? And like the like I just recently said, that might be a situational thing. I mean, I love the tactile feel of the dice, the, the meeples and having the art right in front of me. And if I had a gaming group that I knew would regularly play this game, I would start going after the physical thing in a heartbeat. But if you're someone who's like me, who, who knows they may pull it out once in a blue moon, then you might get more bang for your buck with the app. I mean, there's so many wonderful features that the app has that, that makes it well worth it over the physical game as well. And you won't feel like you are missing out, especially once those expansions do come out in time. Alternatively, if you aren't quite sure if Root is right or wrong for you, then you can buy this app just as a way to dip your toes into the Woodland River, just to get a bit of an understanding whether this will be an experience that you think is wonderful or whether it's just kind of meh. Either way, Root is a game that I personally highly recommend. I, I love it, obviously. It's my favorite game of all time right now. Uh, and it will continue to be a staple in my collection for years to come. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's one more piece of business I have to take care of. Well, I reported my root garden to the police. They told me they see what they turn up, and then they said it wasn't their beat. I don't think they care at all. <laughs>